Blogs every day. Oh. Wake and big. Wake and big. <coughs> What's good, it's your boy? <coughs> Dirtbag Dan blogs every day. It's like 6.30 in the a.m. on Friday. Mm. May 5th. Last night, I went and seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Oh my god. So fucking good. Maybe... Maybe the best comic book adaptation that I've ever seen in my life. Definitely like top of the list. Uh, just thoroughly entertained all the way through. My wife is thoroughly entertained all the way through. You don't need no like context for the Guardians of the Galaxy comic books. And um, are, you don't even the first movie. Like you could even not watch the first movie and be super entertained by the second one. But why wouldn't you? Because the first one's fucking incredible too. Um, yeah. I'm just over here sucking Marvel's dick, but oh my god, I was so entertained. And rather than like uh, do a review of Guardians of the Galaxy and spoil it for people, go see it. Fuck that, just go see the movie. Uh, I just want to do a blog about comic book adaptations, about my favorite comic book adaptations, the ones I hate the most, and then also uh, future comic book adaptations that I can't wait to see, that I know are coming out, and ones that I just fucking cross my fingers and hope that they put together um, at the end of the day. So, um, favorite comic book movie adaptations. Like I said, Guardians of the Galaxy, absolute top of the list, you know what I mean? And it just, it keeps changing, honestly, because the movies keep getting better and better and better. I remember when Spider-Man, the first one came out, the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man came out, absolutely the best to that point, you know? And it just kept getting topped and topped and topped and topped. And Sony, like, shit the bed multiple times with almost all of the X-Men movies, short of the Logan movie, and... You know, Spider-Man has been really hit or miss. And they just keep doing fucking Spider-Man over and over again. Like, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming is coming out, which is cool. And I, I'll fuck with it, especially since it's a Marvel one, you know. But it's just like, who fucking cares about the Peter Parker story anymore? You know what I mean? Like, it's been done to death. At least they're not, like, going all the way back to, you know, Uncle Ben and the origin again and all that. But uh, other ones that I really dug. I thought Watchmen was a great comic book adaptation if you guys aren't familiar with the comic book Watchmen, it is actually the only comic book that is on uh new york times 100 greatest novels list uh it's such a good read the audio version of it is super good except for there's a dude who does all the women's voices and that kind of throws you off it's just one guy doing all the voices but it's such a good story um the watchmaker the it, it, one of the books in that uh, series, The Watchmen. It's like a 10 book series. And one of them in particular called The Watchmaker is so well written and uh, really just fucks with my head and, and like the, the way they deal with time or whatever. It's like it, the character is someone who kind of perceives time all at once. Like you can see everything past and future, present, all at the same time. And uh, the concept of that is really great. Floating off the rails here. But yeah, Watchmen I really liked. And they made they did a major change in the Watchmen. Um, without spoiling it, I'll just say that the the you know, the device that is like the major catalyst for the whole ending of it is different in the movie than it is in the book. But it's similar enough, and they basically just were like, Okay, we're not gonna be able to do, you know, ten books worth of movies, so let's cut it down in a way that doesn't fuck with the story. And I thought that was really good. Like, usually if they change something very specific about a comic book to a movie you would get pissed but i felt like the way they did it in the watchmen didn't fuck with me as much because it was like oh i get it fools are not going to have a context for all this other shit without reading the whole thing so you just like created a, a more a, a thing that made more sense within the context of the universe that was created by the movie or whatever um i think that marvel kicks dc's ass when it comes to movies like without question uh, DC kicks Marvel's ass when it comes to animations. All the dope comic book animations are DC. Uh, Flashpoint Paradox, um, Justice League War. There's so many dope Justice League movies. Um, there's even like Teen Titan movies that are dope, but not like the goofy kids Teen Titans, but like the teenage Teen Titans. Uh, Aquaman, Wonder Woman. They all have like their own like individual animes. And then of course the Batman ones. I think Dark Knight is the best. Killing Joke was kind of a flop. But otherwise, like, they kill it. DC kills it on animation. And the fact that Marvel doesn't have more animation, like, there's so many little Marvel stories that they could 
there should be a Deadpool series for adults. Like, why not? That would be fucking so sick, you know? Uh, just so, there, there's so many different things they could do with that. And there's all these different random, like, uh, Japanese animes, too. There's Wolverine Japanese anime. There's X-Men Japanese anime. Uh, I say Japanese anime like anime doesn't already imply that it's Japanese. Um, Blade anime, tight. I, I'm, I fucks with all that shit. But yeah, for the most part, DC kicks Marvel's ass on the animated shit. Marvel kicks DC's ass on the movies. TV, gotta give it to Marvel because Netflix, I mean, with the exception of Iron Fist, everything is great. And the Defenders, like the trailer's out now and it looks so dope that I don't even care that Iron Fist was bad. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll still watch that shit, you know? And then they're supposed to be making a Punisher series too, so fucking, woo! Uh, other shit I'm looking forward to. I heard that they were making an adaptation of my favorite comic book ever, another Robert Kirkman comic book. That's the guy who does Walking Dead, and that's gonna be a movie uh, called Invincible. Uh, and it's like, Invincible is like, Basically, Kirkman took like all the themes that were created by all the great Marvel and DC superheroes and all the superheroes throughout time, and he created his own new like universe and said, okay, well, what if these scenarios happened? Like, what's a more realistic outcome? You know what I mean? I feel like that's like, that's like the basis of uh, the Incredible books. Not realistic in the sense that like wouldn't be like some person like punching a hole through someone's head or tearing the world apart, but more realistic like. Let's say, like, Superman might accidentally kill someone once. You know, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, shit, I hit that guy and he died. Damn. You know, like, stuff like that, which I really love about Invincible as a comic book. And, they're, and he's, like, a teenager, like, on some Peter, pa or, or Peter Parker shit. Peter Pan. On some Peter Parker shit that is, like, kind of trying to find his way into the, the world of being a superhero. But he's, like, he's, like, it's way more realistic, you know? So he finds himself in way more... Uh, I feel like natural situations. So I'm really excited about seeing the, the movie, the film adaptation of Invincible. And then as far as like shit that I want, like my dream fucking uh, comic book movie adaptation, I would love, if Netflix did a series for uh, Red Thunderbolts, woo, oh my God, that would be the dopest shit in the world. Uh, Thunderbolts is a, superhero team in the marvel universe that was always like villains operating as good guys but they're really villains underneath the surface and uh or vice versa i think the newest adaptation of the thunderbolts is like good guys who people think are villains but uh my favorite run of the thunderbolts was around 2010 and it is uh red thunderbolts where it's general ross who's the red hulk uh deadpool ghost rider punisher uh, they have Red Leader with them, who's like, he's like the prisoner, but he's working for them, and he's got all this fucked up shit going on on the side. Um, basically, it's like, the, it's a team of superheroes or whatever put together by General Ross who are willing to kill people to get the job done. And they make a deals with each other as far as like, you help me do this like impossible job for me, and I'll help you do this impossible job for you. And they go down the list, like, you know, do some shit for Punisher, do some shit for... Red Hulk, do some shit for Elektra. And uh, it's just great because the attitudes are great and they turn on each other and it just it, it, it becomes a really cool book. Uh, if they were able to adapt that into a like a series for Netflix, I would fucking, I'll die happy, you know? Hopefully I live long enough to see that shit. That's what I feel like with their comic book shit. It just keeps getting better and better and better. And every time I go to the movies, there's another thing where I'm like, oh my God, they're making that into a movie. Uh, so... At this point, I'm just trying to stay alive, man. I might start eating healthy and working out just for comic book movies at this point. I don't know. Well, guys, I think that's it. I've nerded out enough for one day. Vlogs every day in this bitch. You bitch.